Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about gutters and hopefully when they come in in a few weeks, we'll be able to get them installed and uh, we'll show you what we got and hopefully they last the entire time that we own this house. few things that uh, I want to talk about real quick. So number one, first thing is I am super happy that again, we went with a weave pattern in the valley where the porches come together. And the reason why that is, is before I got the shingles on and I got the porch up, we had a few days of heavy rain. And what I was noticing is when you've got uh, converging roofs in that valley, you're obviously increasing the water flow there and water off of these, no joke, was coming out here like six feet. So tremendously fast going down that ice and water shield. And imagine if we had done the uh, metal flashing there. Uh, the metal flashing is even smoother and the water would have picked up even more speed than the ice and water shield because it's got a little bit of texture on it. But the crazy thing today, as you can see, it rained pretty good. The water was actually only coming off of those valleys about three to four inches. So we went from six feet of high flow down to three or four inches because the shingles are basically acting as like a Plinko effect. That water is getting broken up with all of the rocks down in there and it's really really slowing it down. And again, we went from six feet down to like three to four inches just because we put shingles up there. So again, I am super stoked and happy that uh, that will keep uh, down from basically water trying to go over the gutter. That also keeps down on us having to get like a more expensive gutter system. For example, back in the day, I think gutters used to be around maybe three or four inches. I think the standard now is around five inches, but if we would have gone with a metal roof, say a standing seam with an 812 pitch roof, we 100% probably would have had to have purchased six inch gutters, which would not have been cheap. And again, that is because the water is going so fast that once it shoots off the roof, you basically have to have a gutter longer to be able to catch that water. So by those uh, weave patterns and by us doing asphalt shingles, we're saving on gutters and uh, the total price of our gutters that I had purchased was around $1,800 including tax, including the gutters, the downspouts, caulking, uh, and even all of the uh, leaf guards. So if we lived in the middle of an open field, like a lot of farm fields are going around here nowadays, you wouldn't have had to have purchased leaf guards. And I think those leaf guards are very expensive. They're more expensive than the shingles them, or the, uh, the gutters themselves. They were, I think, close to like six or $700 alone. And our downspouts and fittings are more expensive. We actually went with uh, not really looking at the online calculators too well. Uh, I just decided to upgrade that too. So instead of getting downspouts, which I think the standard is about a two by three inch downspout, we actually went with a three inch by four inch downspout. So again, that increases the price a little bit because again, you're supposed to look at an online calculator and see how much square footage of roof you have. That'll tell you how much downspout you need for water flow, obviously. But uh, I just said, screw it and went with the more expensive downspout, the bigger downspout. So we can pretty much carry any amount of water on this roof that we want. In total, I don't think that's that bad. Now, because I am doing this on my own and not going with someone to do the gutters, which surprise, surprise, I did ask someone to come out here and look at the gutter install. And once again, no call, no show. They have now ghosted me. So so we cannot get anyone to come out to this property ever when messaging and calling on the phone seems to be going okay and it's just like hey I got a project for you would you like to come out and give me a price quote oh sure yeah I'll be there and again no call no show so uh, I am actually not gonna go with seamless gutters because you can totally 
uh, put two gutters together and uh, trim them out accordingly where you can put them together put in some caulking underneath on a few beads before you put them together and they pretty much look like seamless gutters so why not go ahead and save probably a few thousand dollars for somebody else doing it and uh, just do it yourself but again total we've got about 176 feet of roof up here that needs gutters and around $1,800 total again including tax and leaf guards I don't think that's that bad especially when we upgraded the gutters now typical gutters uh, usually are aluminum um, I actually kind of wanted to go copper maybe just to give the house a little bit of a color pop but copper is just ridiculously expensive but uh, we went with aluminum so they pretty much should last the entire time of the house but again because we have such a high pitch uh, I did go ahead and upgrade to a thicker steel. So it's a heavy gauge aluminum gutter. Again, standard five inch. And uh, we will be going ahead and putting in plenty of the self-tapping screws, if you will, that will go through the gutter and into the fascia. I got enough of those that they're, that they're on center can probably pretty much hold me up if I were to stand on them. So $1,800, you could probably get away with, again, spending half of that, probably maybe only four or $500 if you would've went with the standard thickness. You didn't purchase the uh, leaf protectors. So it definitely should last the entire time of this house. So when everything shows up here in a few weeks, I'll show you guys uh, hands on how we're gonna do this and uh, how difficult it is to install. Uh, should be a fun little project for this video. It should keep uh, the water out from splashing in against the house. And uh, hopefully in the future, we'll be able to get everything piped underground so we don't, again, keep water away from the house and uh, we'll just get to it when the stuff shows up. Hey guys, welcome back for a, uh, obviously is what you can see, a freezing cold, rainy uh, September day. It is officially fall now. And uh, yeah, uh, we're back three, three and a half, almost four weeks later. The gutters are here. You guys already saw them sitting on the back of the trailer here in the last video, which was vlog number 100. And it was the one where I passed inspection uh, for electric on the inside. But uh, real quick before we actually take a look at all the stuff that we got. Oh man, I wish that uh, showed up better on camera than what it does in person. God, that just looks so freaking good. But let's take a look at our supplies, see what we got, what we're gonna be working with. Uh, I'm really impressed by the uh, gutter guards. Hopefully they work good, or the leaf guards, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, the reason why they're so expensive is they are, I think, aluminum and stainless steel. And there's absolutely nothing that's gonna get through these. I've seen different products online, and when you guys actually look at this stuff, those holes in there are basically smaller or the same size as like a house uh, window screen. Um, the, the rock pieces um, from the, the shingles, 1000% can't go in there and clog anything up. These come in four foot sections at a time and then you do a little bit of an overlap, screw them down to the top of the gutter. And uh, yeah, the, the, the sides here are definitely aluminum, but uh, I, yeah, these are stainless steel. So these are expensive, they should last forever. Everything else for the gutter install, like I said, I bought hundreds of these things. These are the clips that go in the gutter and hold everything down. These are aluminum also. And then you drill that guy down through the uh, inside of the gutter and then that will go through the fascia. And it's about two inches or so. So that should go through plenty of the three eighths of fascia for the LP. And it'll actually uh, drill into the two by six uh, fascia boards that are up there. So that should be a very tight and se secure location. These are the little plates that you kind of have to drill a hole in your gutter or acceptor. I don't know what you want to call it, but that falls down on the inside of the gutter. And then as it sticks on through there, that's where your downspout will attach to. And it will go down on the inside of the downspout. And then you'll screw it, drill it, glue it, whatever you got to do to keep that secure. That's made of aluminum also. And then we've got some approved caulking for everything. And then last in these big boxes here, we got to open up. Those are actually the 16 foot gutters themselves. And the uh, downspouts came in uh, 10 foot sections. Okay, so aluminum downspouts and yes those are a hell of a lot bigger than what i'm used to seeing those are three by fours instead of two by threes 
and that is definitely going to carry some freaking water. I'm going to have the downspout uh, for the garage on this side of the garage and on the other side on the garage door side. Uh, what I planned out on this side was the gutters or the downspouts are going to come down here. I'm going to get some PVC pipe down in here and then I'm going to remove a foot or so of stone all the way down here in front of the garage and we're going to PVC pipe all the way back there. So the front of the garage and the back of the garage will meet together and then we can run a pipe out to the backyard and drain the garage that way. So that way this downspout will finish off nice here underground. We'll backfill it with dirt and the PVC pipe there and that'll all be nice and clean. And then for the back porch, I think I'm gonna do the, maybe the same way, I, I don't know. Uh, the front of the house is gonna be a little bit different because the property flows backwards that way. So the front of the house I haven't really thought about yet, but I think if you imagine this is the back of the house, I'm gonna have gutters go on the house and then the porch and probably the downspouts will come out to the tip of the porch here and they'll shoot out this way going towards the backyard. And then the same for that side, just make a, you know, an L for the front, the porch, bring the downspout down the uh, six by six post in the back, and then again, shoot it out into the yard and then let it all go out uh, draining to the back. But the front here, I still got to think where I'm going to put the downspout and how I'm actually going to do that one. But that's it. That, that's all I got for you guys so far. So uh, products are in. Just need to get the lift, need to get a warm day because I need to paint everything before I can actually put the gutters up. So all of the back fascia boards need painted first and then I can actually put the gutters on. Uh, and then uh, I can do the whole back of the house right now actually. The front of the house obviously has to wait for the uh, uh, porch to be finished and be put, put on. All right, and then last but not least, what kind of vlogger would I be if I didn't show you everything? These are the gutters. So I believe they call them just a K style. So just a standard looking shape of a gutter, nothing special. Obviously, once again, everything is in black and uh, that's how it will go on. So we'll uh, figure out how to get all the clips on, how to cut a kind of this front piece here so that it can slide into another piece. Cause obviously these are not gonna just slide right into each other just like this. Cause, I mean, yeah, you can bend them down a little bit but uh, you gotta get them to accept from one piece into another since we're not doing seamless. But uh, let's uh, meet back here again. We'll start at least on the front of the garage here and get one of them done. That'll give me some experience before I move out for the rest of the house. And uh, there is a box in the truck too where we've got the you know corner pieces for where they have to meet into the porch. And uh, there might be something else in that box, I can't remember. But. Uh, that's what we're dealing with. So I'll see you guys back here again when we do for install. And uh, again, this video is like a month and a half in the making, so hang tight. Hey everybody, welcome back uh, a year later to our gutter video. In fact, it's almost a year later. It's August 22nd. And as you just saw in that last clip uh, with the hoodie on, uh, I said it was sometime in September. But uh, what I got working on today, just finally get around to digging holes, which uh, I was waiting for a cooler day to do that. And uh, well, yeah, we're digging holes. We gotta get our underground gutter and drainage stuff done. So what I've got going on over here is this is gonna be the high side where we're starting out. So this side of the garage is gonna funnel down into right there. I'm going to swoop a 90 and then a 90 in front of the garage and take a pipe all the way over to this side. So that way the pipe isn't like running under the driveway putting water into the front yard. The entire property, again, always flows, or if you guys haven't heard, I've always said it has flowed front to back. So we don't want that water up there on that side of the front of the uh, garage uh, just sitting out there. So I'm gonna dig up some of the stone, bring some pipe all the way back here, and then it's gonna meet up with this side of the garage in this Y connector right there. So same thing, the downspout will go right here. It'll merge in to right there. It'll collect right here, and then this discharge will just uh, put it out in here to the yard. And uh, all of this will be under concrete. So the front is going to have concrete for a sidewalk going up to the front. This is eventually all going to be concrete in here. And then back here, going up to those stairs right there, where we'll have the uh, lower deck 
this will be concrete too. So all of this has to go down and under all of that. So we got a somewhat humid, but cooler day. So I guess we're just gonna get busy, get the shovel in, use the laser level, knowing that we're starting out right there where that uh, first 90 is down in the ground with our three inch by four inch downspout connector piece uh, on top. So that's where we're starting out with the laser level. I'm just gonna measure on down there, make sure we get a nice slope. And hopefully by the time we get back down there, we'll actually be really low on that Y connector that'll be under all of this stone and basically almost sitting on the ground back there. All right, we got 47 feet, so times a quarter per foot. We need to go down 11.75 inches from right here where we make the turn and we go down in the front of the garage. So we'll have to get this pretty much level down here. And then I think we do, we definitely have a foot down there. In fact, we might even be able to speed that up a little bit and go more like a half of an inch per foot. So that again, we make sure we discharge down there on the existing ground and we'll have a beautiful slope and we'll definitely be under all of the concrete. Well, that was about the worst thing ever, but we're done. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Everywhere on the front of the house and the back of the house, we'll just go ahead and get an excavator trench down where we need to go. But for right now, why don't we go ahead and test it? Put the garden hose down over in there, let the water run, and uh, hopefully we all see it just flow on out. And then we'll have to buy a little bit more pipe because that's all I had for, I think, 50 pieces or 50 feet, but this pipe here is gonna have to extend out into the yard more, probably right around here. And then this one needs trench downward uh, with that Y fitting. Uh, that Y fitting I think is just gonna go down here somewhere, like say right there, and then we can just go right at an angle and just turn the four by three uh, so it's flush against the house, but the 90 can go any which way that it wants. And uh, they'll all just meet up somewhere down here Flow the water all out. We'll probably trench it down more uh, down throughout the yard somewhere over there and then cover it all up with dirt and build this up a little bit, especially when we get that concrete slab up in here. That's going to raise this whole area up a good five inches. And then we have a lot of room down in here that we can grade and do stuff to. And that's only because uh, we got 1,500 square feet of a uh, roof over here. And that's going to be a lot of water coming down off of there. And of course, we don't want to create like a swamp over here somewhere. We want to discharge that, obviously, away from the house, away from the propane tank, and anywhere else so that we don't kill the grass as much as we can. But 1,500 square feet is a lot of roof, and it's going to be a lot of water. But let's fire up the garden hose, and let's get done for the day. I hear it. It should be coming.
All right, I would say that proves it. Job well done for now. We'll just get a couple more pieces of piping. We'll connect this Y pipe over in here. And then eventually sometimes we gotta get a lift. I just don't know when that will be, when uh, Aaron and I can actually afford it. I gotta get up in here. I gotta paint all that fascia, then get the gutter stuck up in there, then glue them together, screw them to the fascia board, and just a lot of work to do. But we'll be back on another day to wrap it up. Hey everybody, welcome back for another month later, year and a half later since this gutter video started, and we finally got a lift. Uh, I don't know how much I'm gonna get done with that lift because we still gotta do the gable ends up in here. We still gotta do so much painting on all of the fascias before the gutters go on. And then real quick today, I ended up using the last of my Cedar Shake LP smart siding for this gable end wall over here. And of course I ran out. So just real quickly up in there, I caulked uh, in between the zip and uh, the LP on that like little L channel up in there. I caulked that, caulked all the last nail holes because I have absolutely no idea when we're gonna be able to get um, more in. It could take like three or four weeks to order more of those in, but not a big deal because I think everyone decided that the cedar shakes are gonna go on this front gable end over here. That's not an area that I had calculated anyway, so we need to basically make a big purchase anyway to fill all that up in there. But as for the gutters, I've, I can at least do the front of the house. Uh, we've got everything done. We're ready to plumb down and under. We got uh, this little kick out piece that I needed for the genstone because it sticks away. That fascia board has been painted for a year or more. So this is all basically ready to go. We uh, are trekking up here. We need a little piece up in there and then wherever that gutter goes, we need to cut a hole and attach one more piece with uh, two more like elbow kickouts that I've got in the house. So what I'm working on right now is I just went ahead and attached the end pieces. Uh, basically we glue them on with some type of silicone caulking approved uh, for gutters. These come with a, uh, a left and a right side and I glued the inside and then I got these aluminum uh, black rivets off Amazon, a couple hundred of them. So uh, not only are they glued on, but they're riveted on and that way they'll basically hold up for the lifetime. So I think I'm gonna try and install this 16 footer right now. And I think this is the one that needs trimmed out because we're gonna be going downhill obviously from here over to there. So this one, I think it's trimmed out at the end so we can like bubble it, like kind of squeeze it into each other, set it inside of the next one. So that way you have a shingling effect. So the water runs downhill. And then this one right here, we'll get like three beads of caulking on it. And we'll probably have like a six inch overlap or something. And those three beads will keep it all uh, uh, waterproofed as it backtracks if water does want to go back uphill. But uh, for right now, this one I think is ready to go. Uh, the only thing that I think I'm going to change and not do on the front of the garage is because the garage is like 30 some feet long. I don't think I'm going to put the, uh, gutters up underneath of the flashing. And that's because I need to start so tall up here. By the time I get down there, I'm going to be under the flashing anyway. So I think I'm just going to sneak away with maybe another half inch or more up here and just get it up behind the shingles and up and under. And then again, by the time we get all the way down there, we're gonna be under that flashing anyway. So uh, hopefully that wood never rots out there and the splashing isn't that bad. But uh, everywhere else up on these short runs, we've got more than enough room that we can stick the gutters up and underneath of the flashing. So it's not a big deal. But I guess let's just go ahead and get this one 16 foot long. We need about a two inch drop over 16 feet so for wa uh, proper water drainage. And uh, we'll see how these attachment pieces work with the drill and uh, we'll just go from there.
All right, so that's not too bad on your own. Uh, just kind of have to support it. Get one screw in kind of somewhere over here like I did and then go down and back and forth to trying to get your taper right. And I only basically put in one extra hole that I won't be utilizing down there. But uh, again, this one all the way up at the top. Again, I wish it was underneath of the flashing, but really it wouldn't go underneath of the flashing anyway, I think, because of these type of brackets in here. So as I'm looking at this, that kind of changes everything anyway. You really wouldn't be able to get the flashing too far under here because obviously this bracket is in the way and then the screw would go through. So you'd have to put the screw in like through the flashing and the back of the uh, gutter here. But uh, I don't know, but we'll see how it is. But again, I just tried to get this one on this side all the way up as high as it would go. And then as you can see, we got about a two foot or two inch taper down there. And I just filled up a large glass of water. So if we go ahead and test it out. Water doesn't really want to go down there. And it is all now leaking out down there. And that should work good because no water stayed in here, even though it did drip and touch that silicone caulking I just put in there. But it is completely dry all the way down there and it is still running out the end. This is not a huge taper um, for 16 inches at, uh, or 16 feet at two inches. It's only about a quarter of an inch. Ideally, you wanna maybe do like a half of an inch. I don't think it's the end of the world to have just, just the garage. Everywhere else we'll try to do more of a half of an inch because we've only got about six feet here or so and we've only got about 10 feet here or so, so we can be a lot more aggressive with our tapers on these short runs. But uh, yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and screw all of these in, and then we'll go down there and figure out how we're gonna taper that and cut it to stick this second one in. But I will have to just check real quick. I don't think we're gonna make it 100% with two pieces because you always want a little bit of overlap over here. So this sticks out beyond your shingles. I think we're at about 32 feet and we've only got two 16 inches, which is exactly 32 feet. So we may be like an inch or two shy. That is really gonna suck, but I'm gonna go down here and measure real quick after I screw all these in. Man, does that look good. That black really blends in there. It's just the right uh, kind of satin finish too that it like trims that out. It's nice too that the fascia boards, because they're wood and they've got nail holes and seams where they come together, that all kind of finishes that off and blocks it off so it gets rid of all of that. Uh, kind of unsightly you can't really see it on camera but you know i'm annoyed if you can see a nail hole and it wasn't perfectly caulked and painted but that just covers up everything beautifully good morning everybody so sorry about footage yesterday uh it got late last night i stayed out here with a uh, light on my head and tried to finish up the side of the garage uh, i got really behind trying to work with those uh viking screens they weren't fitting and I went back and looked. Uh, apparently you are allowed to bend them. We were like a half of an inch over the gutter and uh, the little rib that needs to stick in on the inside is literally over a half of an inch on the outside. I don't know if I got the wrong screens, like maybe I got a six inch screen instead of a, uh, a five inch screen, um, but online says you are allowed to bend them and make them fit. So I didn't know that and I kept playing with them. And then I just kept busting it out all night long and wasn't worried about filming because getting the house done obviously is a little bit more important. But today we're gonna try and finish up this side. We're going to uh, caulk everything that we need to. We're going to see if we can get those Viking screens to work one more time. And then I see a crap load of fingerprints that I need to go up and go ahead and get rid of. But I did finish this side up as for uh, the install. And uh, really, it, it wasn't that bad. We, we had to add on an extension piece like I thought. That sucks. But there is one more seam up there at 12 inches long. All of the pieces fit together. Uh, like you always want to have the first piece uh, up in here needs to go into the piece that it's running below obviously so you have a shingling effect so your water doesn't splash on the outside we got these brackets here that are real thin aluminum that you just kind of bend around with your hands screw into the wall and uh that is another thing that i need to go to the store today and get i only had black drywall screws i need to go get some stainless steel ones and then because these are screwed right into the wood i need to go ahead and remove them anyway 
put some caulking behind there and then screw it back in so that way water as it drills uh rains on down doesn't get into that wood and rot it out behind there so we want to caulk and seal that other than that it went pretty good it looks really good this is first time seeing it in daylight i got it uh pretty darn straight all the way from top to bottom the only thing I did that I didn't say I was gonna do is up on that upper bracket piece or that uh, four by three inch mounting piece up there, I put it on the bottom side of the gutter instead of dropping it down inside like I said I was gonna do. I didn't wanna create a lip or a ridge so water uh, doesn't have to go up and over to get down in. It's actually riveted from the bottom and then around the bottom and up on top, it's siliconed very well. So hopefully any water that gets up in there will just drop straight on down. And then finally, the last kind of thing that I had to do, which you cannot tell down here, I'll go up there and show you. But because the downspout is about two and a half feet in, that last piece over there, I couldn't obviously have it continue downhill. So I kind of pushed up on the bottom of it. So water flowed back towards the downspout on that two and a half feet. Again, on the outside, it looks perfect. You can't tell that anything is done. But on the inside, by pushing that back up, uh, on the back side of the gutter, it kind of like bowed out a little bit because obviously you're bending the metal in a way it doesn't want to bend. But you can't tell that from down here. I'm going to go up there and maybe put a screw in to push it against the house. And because we are running downhill and we're running below that flashing, I may put some caulking up in there too to uh, kind of caulk in between the LP and in between the downspout so water doesn't go up and over and behind and then leak down if it's a heavy enough downpour and water splashes out. I don't think that's going to happen with a five inch gutter. Rather be safer than sorry in the long run, but uh, let's go up there. Let's see if we can get the Viking shields in. Let's caulk what we need to and uh, let's call this side done. And that's all I was meaning right there. We have a little bit of a bow. So I'm gonna try and put a screw through there maybe, but when you push it there, it's gonna try and pop out on the other side. But the front stayed completely level and straight, so you can't even tell. And again, will water actually get behind there and drain down? I doubt it, but uh, I'll try to put one or two screws in there and just see what happens. Or maybe even one more bracket and put it through there and see what happens. All right, so apparently you just get a board, line up what you need for your bend, and then you start grabbing and pulling and we're just pulling this up like i said about a half of an inch trying to keep it straight and then hopefully that's enough that it'll slide down in there and this inside rib here will hold uh, against the gutter and then we'll put a screw down through it. This backside doesn't really get attached to anything, but as long as this is bolted down here, it's not like this is really, I don't think it's gonna flap in the wind or anything when it's pressed in there. But again, I hope this is not now too tall that it can't go up and under um, the gutters in the back as it's uh, uh, up closer to the roof, as opposed to this end over here by the garage doors. All right, there you go. That pops down in and fits. Like I said, on this side, it's not a big deal because even we can get under the existing uh, flashing back here. But over here, uh, you can obviously see, you know, you're down below, but as long as it's completely protected, I don't see it really being a problem. Just go ahead and get some screws now, put them down here in this front fascia. Hopefully you can't see this down below, that this is silver while the rest of the house obviously is black and you shouldn't be able to. But I guess let's see how many we can get on. Get all the leaves out of the gutter that fell in last night. And let's see if we can't finish this up completely. And we are done. And we are already working. All right, everybody, a little later in the day. As you can see, I went ahead and got these fascia boards painted back here. Let them dry for an hour or so. I already got the gutters on. I already got all the leaf guards on. 
and uh, now we're ready to do the downspout. So I went ahead and painted this guy because again, I'm mounting mine from the bottom. Uh, most people that I see online, they just drill their hole in their gutter and set this down in and then they caulk it. But to me, why would they put these holes in here if they didn't want it like put up from the bottom and rivet it in? But I painted it because you could obviously see that lip there as the gutter goes around it. So now this is black and kind of hidden more. I'm gonna have to paint the other side, uh, either with spray paint and tape it off or maybe paint brush, I don't know. But um, I gotta get that side painted because it's a little unsightly to see that silver ring. But with uh, six rivets up in here, bolting that up, plus with the gutter down in its hole, uh, gravity really can't pull that down. Not to mention the gutters up in there at like an inch and a half. It's, it can't like shimmy out left or right or drop down and fall out. So this was six rivets and glued up to the bottom. I think it's more than enough to hold this. And then again, you don't create that lip right there where water doesn't want to like fall down in here because you got a big fat glue line going all the way around it. And then your gutter is constantly holding water. So I've already measured off where center line is on uh, this downspout from the wall over. So now I just got to go up there, do the same thing, mark my spot on the gutter, uh, cut that hole out. And then again, that last like two feet or so, um, I actually, instead of like bending the gutter and kinking it, I actually cut this gutter way back short. So I put in a longer piece there and then that longer piece can just tilt up. So anything on that last two, will, two feet will just flow right back into the downspout and everything going that way will obviously flow down too. All right, so garage side is almost done. Uh, I went ahead and painted those two right there because as I bolt the downspout on, I don't obviously want to get paint behind there and miss it and stuff. So I got to wait for that first coat to dry. I'll put a second coat on that. Then I'll bolt up that downspout and then the garage will be completely done, piped underground. And it looks like it's going to rain tomorrow and we should be ready. But while that paint's drying, I'm going to go ahead and work on this side and the back of the house. And for the first time, I actually noticed that I did get what I paid for, for the heavy duty downspouts. Uh, this is a piece of the downspout that I'll show you real quick how I'm trying to make these quote unquote seamless. But this is the heavy downspout. And when you cut it, you can just see how thick the aluminum is. But because we have a corner back there, the corner pieces that I got are not heavy duty for some reason. And then you can see the thinness and the uh, aluminum on that one. And it is quite a difference. It's almost double the thickness. So I am glad that I paid a little bit more money and got the gutters at uh, heavy aluminum or double the thickness it seems. But real quick, how to make these kind of seamless. We're measuring in two inches and then we're cutting at an angle from the two inches out to the tip. And then same with this one from the tip back two inches. And then because this gutter is gonna be going inside of this, uh, the way the water flows, you just sit that down in there and it actually will pop in. And then you can kind of slide it together a little bit and it gives almost a perfect seam. Obviously you can see it from up here, but once we put a rivet in down here and we put three beads of caulking down in here, kind of, you know, at zero inch, one inch and two inch, this will give this a nice waterproof seal. And again, this is gonna be flowing downhill. So we have a shingling effect that this one is above this one. And then we'll turn the corner and go that way. 
and that's how basically you do that but we're running out of daylight here so i'm just going to set the camera down and get cracking and just do as absolutely much as i can all right everybody just got this side of the house done so we got the back porch we got the back of the house done the only thing that i need to do and still purchase is i siliconed the crap out of back in there which is probably overkill because once we put the uh, leaf guards on that will stop a lot of the splashing but water is going to shoot off of this like no tomorrow so we're going to have to purchase one of those uh corner deflectors that go from like here around that stick up three to four inches or so because again water is just going to come right off of here and hit that deflector and then it can trickle back down into the gutter because if not I promise um, that water is going to shoot right over that like this corner is not even there. So we'll have to purchase that or maybe make it if I've got a little bit extra aluminum uh, left over. Depends what material I can come together and kind of bend it into a 90. But yeah, it's not pretty when you're looking up here looking like that. But again, I think once we put the, the uh, leaf guards back up in here, I think any water that hits that grill guard or the uh, splash protector won't splash back and get onto the flashing up in here or any of the siding back in there and then run on down. It will bounce, but it has to hit that grate and then fall back down instead of kind of like shooting back. But we'll see what happens when I get these grill guards in this corner and then go from there. Oh man, I'm getting tired. So I just finished up that second coat of paint over there. And I don't know if you guys can see it from here, but see how these last like three rows, you can kind of see silver against the house. And down there you can see black. I just hit those uh, bent up silver edges with black spray paint. Uh, good for wood, metal, plastic, and more. So hopefully it'll show. Basically standing way out in the backyard being tall enough, I could see that silver lip. I didn't like it. So I went ahead and sprayed um, the silver against the uh, flashing. And surprisingly, I could even see the porch over there, even though the porch is way taller, I could still see it downhill over there uh, by the RV. So you could probably see the metal screening from here is still silver, but when you're standing down on the ground, that bent up screen and bent up back metal lip is all spray painted black, so now you can't see anything. So not only are all the bolts kind of hidden, but the uh, metal screens are hidden and just got finished painting this outside fascia for the second time so that is all done i did go ahead and put my downspout hole over there i just haven't decided how i'm going to run the downspouts over there yet so that does have a hole if it rains tomorrow uh that's going to be a lot of water running down there though on top of that diamond pier but uh, that should at least be good. And then probably in another hour or so, I'll go ahead and get the downspout on over there. And then the garage will be 100% done. We just need to finish painting under here, painting the soffits. And I think after that, the garage outside is 100% done. There's nothing else that I have to do to the outside. There's just a lot more to do. Just a lot more spray paint that needs to go on the silver flashing going up there. We've got to get that sided. We've got to get that painted up in there. So that technically is part of the garage or technically into the house that that still all needs done under there. And we've got to paint underneath of the soffit as I'm laying on my back, uh, laying on the roof under there. So that's going to be a huge pain in the butt, but we got to get that done and uh, get back to the deck. And we got to go over to the front of the house and still over on that side of the porch. And we've got three more gutters to do. So. It's crazy that I've only gotten uh, like three gutters done in two days. Granted, I got to stop waking up after like uh, one o'clock and uh, getting out here. But I think uh, you guys get the idea. I think you get the point. Um, on our first rain day, uh, if we can catch all the water coming out of that discharge down there, maybe I'll do like a YouTube short for that. But I think for right now, I'm just going to go to the front of the house, maybe get the front porch kind of done. I do have to do some painting just like I did on here and some caulking on all of those screw holes. Uh, so we hide the front gutters and then I'll just transition to the front porch, the front porch, and then I'll come around that side and do that side tomorrow. But, uh, you guys get the idea. This video has been a year and a half, year and a month in the making crazy long time uh at least we got our gutters on now we don't have to worry about as much water getting into the basement because everything is going to be kicking out to the backyard and that's going to protect us so much better 
But if you guys enjoy the video, if you like how we're progressing, it's only fall just now, so we do have some warm days, warm-ish days still to go uh, to finish out the deck and the back siding, and then we can finally get these windows and doors in. But until then, I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. Hope you all enjoyed another one. If you got anything to say, say it down below in the comments, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.